Hello, nerd. There are different types of flavor for Astartes chapters. Some are pedantic nerds that want everything to go according to the plan. Some like to dance with the devil, allowing demons to inhabit their bodies. And some like to charge enemy lines on speed bikes like it's a decapitation contest. In the end, these all are choices. But you know what is not a choice? A gene seed mutation. If you are one of the unlucky or lucky Astartes, I guess it depends on how you view it, then you might experience some type of a gene seed flaw that would make one of your organs function in an unpredictable way or mutate you even on a deeper level with just weird consequences. Some of these chapters have learned to embrace them, others were consumed by them, while most don't pay no mind to them because those are just minor mutations. But there are chapters that have been altered so significantly that they have been erased from existence by Inquisition or have been viewed as borderline heretics. Today, we will look at the Astartes chapters with crazy mutations, so make sure you are subscribed, join the Discord server, consider becoming a member, and without further ado, let's dig in. There is only war. The Mantis Warriors, famed in the Segmentum Ultima for their cunning, were like the galaxy's best-kept secret defenders of the Imperium of Man, unsung heroes with a knack for guerrilla warfare that made their foes wish they would never cross their path. These warriors stood like the lone wolves guarding the dark corners of the galaxy. Their autonomy was sacred, no allies to swoop in for backup until the High Lords of Terra decided to mix things up and chuck them into an alliance called the Maelstrom Warders it really didn't play out as expected. Joined by the Astral Claws and the Lamenters, they formed this dream team, if you can even call it like that, that turned out to be more of a nightmare. This alliance became the cornerstone of the Mantis Warriors' downfall. They should have stuck to the solo gig. These guys were so shrouded in mystery, it's like their history got wrapped in layers of myth and allegory. Trying to find facts about them was like trying to find a needle in a haystack during Supernova. The Mantis Warriors were like that emo kid at school. They only peeked into the Imperium's business when it intersected with their own or their protected turf. Then came the Battle War. These warriors joined the Renegades, sticking it to the Administratum and Inquisition. But surprise, surprise, they were played like a fiddle by Chaos and ended up with a one-way ticket to the Empress list of dumb fucks who can't do their own due diligence, a hundred years penitence crusade to make up for their stupidity. Their chapter master got the worst end of the deal, stripped of honor, armor, and dumped in the Imperial Slammer for life. To add insult to the injury, their stuff was repossessed like a car that is late on payments. But wait, there's more. They lost their homeworld got banned from recruitment, which means they couldn't get any more new neophytes, and had to resort to the blood trade with the Carcaradons to boost their numbers. After some tyrannid pest control, they got a half-hearted nod from the Inquisition to recruit again, but redemption might be too late. Too late for these cursed, almost extinct warriors who can't catch a break, clinging to the edges of the Imperial Law like an electrician to a naked cable. Imagine being on the brink of oblivion, walking the line between existence and joining the names of fallen heroes in the Imperial Palace's Hall of Shame. They are like the black sheep of the Imperium, hunted by their past but trying desperately to claw their way back into the Emperor's good graces. Mantis Warrior's biology is kind of a fucked. Their pre omnor gland that allows Astartes to spit poison, for them it's mutated and is malfunctioning. When these Astartes flick a switch in their minds, it squirts out a neurotoxin that's a guilt trip on steroids. Suddenly, they're drowning in remorse for every little slip up and singing praises to the Emperor like it's their new reason for existence. But it's not just a feel bad party, it's a full body makeover. Their brain hits overdrive, clocking into a different time zone, a deep meditative state that only trained psychers can achieve. They gain this ultimate focus on battle, plus their muscles bulk up like they're auditioning for bodybuilding contest. This turbocharged transformation is a one-way ticket. Sure, they become battle powerhouses, but their vision, it narrows down tighter than Cochrane from AliExpress. Goodbye, peripheral vision, hello tunnel vision. They're basically blind to anything that is not their target. The Mantis Warriors always poetic call this whole circus the Battle Haze. 
Each company has their own squad of these devout space marines. They're like the Emperor's diehard fan club called Mantis Religiosa. The genius who discovered this glitch was Captain Maetrus. He not only figured out this toxin trick, but also led the charge against some astral claws gone rogue after the battle war. Talking about Hero's tragic fall, dude found the secret sauce, then got swallowed up by the mutation himself. Moving onwards to the Black Dragons, their gene seed is like a do-it-yourself kit for a space marine makeover, complete with a funky Osmodula zygote. This little organ, Osmodula, has a big job, is the engineer of bone growth and reinforcement, turning these neophytes into these massive Astartes. Two years post-implantation, these recruits hit a growth spurt of epic proportions, their bones toughen up and their chests turn into this fortress of interlocking plates, shielding their spare hearts and lungs. But here's where the things get freaky. The Black Dragon's gene seed throws a curveball, mutating and causing these bony outgrowths. You can think of head crests, forearm blades, you name it. They have got their own separate division, the Dragon Claws. A bunch of warriors with these bone protrusions sharpen to the slice and dice perfection. They have even coated these bone weapons in adamantium, making them a nightmare in close combat. To add to the freak show, these Astartes sport some dental work too. Canines turn into fangs, mouths go black, tongues sharpen like daggers. It's like a twisted makeover show gone wrong. But not everyone's a fan of this extreme makeover. The Inquisition is side-eyeing these mutations, and some Space Marine chapters like the Marines Malevolent straight up refuse to team up with Black Dragons. They're all about this pure genetic template, hunting down what they see as Emperor's design gone wrong. The Black Dragon's apothecaries might just be the mad scientists of the Adeptus Astartes, supposedly nudging these mutations along like it's some type of a twisted experiment. Word in the street is that they're deliberately planting these wonky gene seeds in neophytes, playing gene roulette in direct violation of the Imperial rules. But hey, when the Dragon Claws bring the thunder, the chapter master seems to turn a blind eye to these shady practices. Now, every Astartes chapter has to cough off 5% of their gene seed for genetic hell check by the Adeptus Mechanicus. It's like a genetic tax, helping keep tabs on Space Marine's genetic integrity and stockpiling gene seed for future chapters. The Black Dragons of course play this game, they hand over their samples, but they are all clean and pure, passing those purity checks like they were Ultramarines. Sounds suspicious, right? Well, the Mechanicus smells something fishy too, suspecting these guys of swapping out their gene seed with a purer stash, but for now it's a game of cat and mouse, with the chapter's practices hidden behind a veil of secrecy and suspicion. Those apothecaries might just have some explaining to do. Of course, and how could we leave out the space vikings? Back in the day, the Emperor's space marines were like genetically souped up battle-ready machines with minds and souls crafted for one thing, war. Each legion had its flair, thanks to their gene seed and unique warrior code. Space wolves were a league of their own, known for their feral vibe and strict obedience to the Emperor, but boy, were they a tough nut to crack. These guys weren't just distant, they were practically in their own universe. They wrapped themselves in layers of myth and stories, guarding their secrets like dragons sitting on treasure. Who they were and what they did for the Emperor? That was locked up tight. Their gene seed, which was juiced up with the Canis Helix, was a double-edged sword. Sure, it cranked up their animal instincts, turning them into top-notch hunters and brutal warriors, but here's the catch. It made them slaves to those instincts, playing puppeteer with their actions. Critics didn't hold back, calling them more wolf than warrior. In essence, the Space Wolves were the wild cards of the Astartes, a bunch of ferocious hunters with a love for hairy situations, no pun intended, but sometimes that animalistic edge took the wheel, leaving some wondering if these guys were really loyal. The Canis Helix sounds like something out of a nightmare, right? This beastly gene twist isn't famous for its casualty count, munching on the lives of countless aspirants. Those who survive, well, they get the front row seat to a monstrous makeover. This helix is like the entrance fee to the Lehman Russ fund club. Without it, no other gene goodies get the party. When this helix crashes the aspirant's genetic code, it's chaos, bones crack, hair sprout everywhere, and suddenly fresh meat becomes the main course in their brains. It's a primal frenzy, massive growth, bones fusing, and hello, canine fangs. 
all while the poor soul wrestles with their inner demons, trying not to go full furry mode, which would turn them into a wild creature that's more nightmare than a marine. They are called Wolfen. Basically, it can make you into a werewolf. But wait, there is more fun in store as these warriors age. Their hair grows grey and thick, fangs turn into full-blown wolf teeth. Even their skin gets in on the transformation, becoming thick and leathery like wolf pelt. To say the least, they are far from human. And now, we have arrived at the Flame Falcons. Their story is the stuff of dark legends, barely a blip in the Imperial records. The chapter showed up, acing their battles against orcs and Eldari Corsairs, showing off this next level grit and bravery that even impressed other space marines. But then, the fires started. Literally. Raffenburg's world was the tipping point. They were fighting against rebel forces and suddenly the first company goes full on barbecue mode, erupting in flames in the middle of the madness. Commander's first thoughts? Witchcraft. Inquisitor's first thoughts? Chaos corruption. When the first company didn't kneel over, but instead turned into fiery berserkers immune to their own flames, the chapter saw a miracle straight from the Emperor. Inquisitor? Not so much. He watches, waits, and sees the rest of the chapter go through the same fiery makeover. When the Flame Falcons headed back home, they were pumped that they had been blessed by the Emperor with this gift. The Grey Knights and Demon Hunters thought otherwise, crashing their party all on the Inquisition's orders. Total massacre, chapter wiped out, or so they thought. A handful might have slipped through the cracks that day, but their fate? That's the part of the story that has vanished into the abyss. Just another chapter lost. This fiery tale of flame falcons, blessed, cursed and ultimately condemned. Many think that they are actually the Legion of the Damned, but who knows? I don't think we will ever find out. And the last ones on your way out are the Storm Giants. Total enigmas in the history books. All they have got is a vague, yeah, they showed up sometime after second founding. Scholars are playing detective, pointing at their looks and tactics saying, Hey, these guys might be cousins with the salamanders and black dragons. Why? Because they got that whole matching physique and style. But hey, when it comes to genealogy in the grimdark, a hint is as good as a legend. So the storm giants remain these mysterious cousins, leaving everyone scratching their heads and spinning theories. But what actually fuels this theory is that storm giants are considered some of the bulkiest and strongest even largest Astartes out there, and some people might argue that Sons of Anteus are the bigger ones, but we are not here for the dick measuring contest. They have similar mutations affecting their bones as black dragons, but quite in a different way. You see, their bones are much denser than regular Astartes. They can survive hits without breaking them that would normally kill a space marine, fueling this whole theory. So there's something to think about. Look, I know there are many Astartes chapters with mutations, but I wanted to point out the ones that seemed as the most interesting ones to me. Anyway, maybe you can add to the list of these mutated Astartes. Let me know down in the comments of the chapters which are ravaged by mutation. Share this information with us because in the end we are community and while you are a nerd, so am I. So that kind of makes us brothers with similar interests, I guess, I don't know, sounded weird. Don't, don't mind me. Anyway, if you enjoy my video, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel with the notifications on so you wouldn't miss my latest upload. And if you really want to support me, then consider becoming a member by clicking on the join button right below the video title. Regardless of that, I really hope you enjoyed this video. With that in mind, I'll see you next time. Nerd!